morning, afternoon or evening, this is COM42 JavaScript 2021. As always, big heads up to our speakers, partners and sponsors for making this whole thing possible. Before we get to the content, I would like to invite you to join our Discord server, where you can have a chat with other attendees and speakers. This event was made possible by Rich.sh Platform, the gold sponsor, Silver Sponsors, Balsamic, the diversity sponsor, and Media Partners. For a good start, let's tune in for the first keynote by Lauren Schaefer, developer advocate at MongoDB. I'm going to be chatting about how to raise your profile, diving into what that means and why you should even bother putting in the effort to do so. Thanks for tuning in. The second keynote will be presented by Jay McCarthy, the CTO of Reach Platform. Hi everyone, I'll be talking about breaking into blockchain development using the Reach development platform uh, and your existing JavaScript skills. Thanks so much for joining us. The first track today is architecture. Discover its two many faces with Michaela Roxana Gidersa, technical lead at Strongbytes. I have to be honest with you, I have a passion for combining technical stuff with public speaking. That's why, this time, I come to you with a proposal of discussing architecture. In my talk, we will certainly touch subjects like what is the architect's role in the team dynamics and how to, in the end, successfully deliver a product that everyone worked on happily. I'm sure that we'll have a lot to discuss after the presentation, so just join me. See you there. In the next session, you will learn how to embrace hexagonal architecture with AWS. Hi, everyone. My name is Luca Mezzalira. I'm a principal solution architect at AWS. And during my talk, I want to introduce you on how to modularize uh, your AWS Lambda functions using hexagonal architecture. Thanks to this uh, architectural pattern, you will be able to evolve your applications, uh, ch interchanging parts of infrastructure and testing in isolation specific part of your business logic. I hope that you will enjoy and please joining us on this amazing conference. The first talk in the security track will be presented by Catherine de Mesa, research intern at Google. My talk is called Red is New Blue, does true security exist? And what that entails is discussing personal security and general security through various talks and discussions throughout the PowerPoint and presentation, which includes hackers, privacy policies, data dumps. You get the whole idea. I'm currently a research fellow slash intern at Google, and additionally, I am a student assistant for Microsoft Teals. And I am also a cybersecurity student at Lone Star College in Houston, Texas. And I really hope to meet you. Amir Shaket, VPRND at PerimeterX, is here to show you how to fix a broken CSP. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Today, we're going to talk about uh, CSP. How is it uh, broken? What can we do to fix it? Or at least just demystify some of it. It's time for the deep dive track. Introducing Daniel Danielewski, software engineer at Capgemini. Hey, interested about TypeScript? My name is Daniel. I will be speaking about TypeScript compile options at Con42.js. Make sure to check it out. Wait, can my browser do that? Is the next lecture by Francesco Lardini, senior consultant and Angular trainer at Trivadis. Hello, everybody. If you are curious to learn more about the modern web APIs and how we can use them in order to create the new, unique functionalities in our web projects, in my session, I will present many demos in order to show in a concrete way how we can use directly these APIs. So thank you for joining in and enjoy the conference. Michael Haberman, CTO of Aspecto, is here to talk about distributed tracing for Node.js using open telemetry. So even if you don't know distributed tracing or open telemetry, uh, this is exactly what I'm going to focus, what, what they are, how they are working. To be honest, you don't have to be super, exper super experienced with specifically with Node.js, but we'll focus mostly on the distributed tracing and open telemetry part. It's time to discover the micro frontend track. Learn more about their foundations with Tomasz Krajewski, the lead at Frontend House. Hi there, I'm Tommy K, and I'm more than excited to be a part of such an amazing event, which is COM42, the JavaScript edition. So many amazing speakers, so many amazing presentations from different categories like architecture, tooling, 
security, performance, micro frontends, and much more. All the JavaScript knowledge at one place. Isn't it great? So yeah, just fasten your seatbelts and let's dive into this collection topic, which is micro frontends. Design system for micro frontends is the next session by Aziz Yazid, GUI architect at Provicor Intelligence. Hi, I will be talking about design system for the micro frontends. In the talk, we will walk through on the design system approach and patterns in order for us to find the best design system for the micro frontend. Thanks for joining in. The structuring frontend monoliths with micro frontends. Introducing Trishul Goel, principal engineer at West Wing. Hello everyone, I'm Trishul. I'm a frontend developer and a JavaScript enthusiast. By day, I architect some e-commerce solution for West Wing and by night, I'm a Mozilla enthusiast. The performance track opens up with Asaf Krinsa, the co-founder of Lifecycle. Hi, Col42. Thanks for attending my talk. React is killing your performance and it's your fault. i am uh, been a developer professionally for the last 10 years or so. And in the last year, I've been a co-founder of a company called Lifecycle.io. Multi-thread Demystified is the next lecture by Attila Fassina, lead front-end engineer at SAP. My talk is going to be about multi-threading in JavaScript. So grab your cup of coffee and let's talk a little bit about what multithreading actually means, what's the difference between concurrent and parallel multithreads, and how to actually use them in a real case React app, for example. And most importantly, how to achieve a great developer experience with web workers. So take a nice cup of coffee or tea or whatever is your thing and hope to see you there. Tamas Piros, Senior Developer Experience Engineer at Cloudinary, is here to show you how to supercharge your JavaScript with WebAssembly. So today I'm going to talk to you about WebAssembly and in order to get started we need to go back a couple of years and we need to take a look at this very very simplified view of the web platform. So think about it this way, you have your browser and your browser is capable of executing JavaScript code. You write some JavaScript and that magically does its thing inside the browser. So there's this virtual machine in the browser itself that is capable of executing, interpreting and doing all sorts of magical things with your JavaScript code. And this is what is available in the browsers today and it was available for a couple of years now. The testing track opens up with Dmitry Vinik, developer advocate at Facebook. Today I'll talk about modern web testing and how to go beyond uh, using Selenium when it comes to web. Nahuel Garbesa, software craftsman at Ten Pines, is here to present Testy, a minimal testing tool designed for teaching. Hi everyone, I'm excited to participate in this conference. Most of you know about testing tools, maybe you are using them on a daily basis, hopefully. But what about implementing a testing tool? How hard it is? How much code do you need? In my talk, I'm going to present a testing tool that I call Testy. I've implemented it following a minimal approach. Right now it has zero dependencies and I use it for teaching in my object-oriented lectures at the university. I will show you how this tool was born, how much you can do with it and a small demo. See you there! Debug Node.js applications in production is the next lecture by Shai Almog, developer advocate at Lightrun. I'll be talking at Con42 JavaScript on October 28th about debugging Node.js applications in production with Lightrun. Please join me. Darth Duck will not be joining. He unfortunately went to the duck side. You can expect worse jokes than this in my talk. Be warned. I finished. It's working. Only test left. Introducing Tal Doron, principal software engineer at NICE. Hello everyone. I'm going to talk and mainly demonstrate via live coding techniques that should help us developers write tests that actually work for us and not the other way around. And also I'm going to explain how to do it as part of the development cycle while actually enjoying it. In the next talk, Bill Colo, front-end optimization engineer at Lovevery, will present the art and science of A-B test development. 
Hi, I'm Bill, and I've been involved in A-B test development for over seven years now. I'll be sharing some introduction to the A-B testing process, as well as some general advice and best practices for experimentation. This will be of interest to anyone who's interested in the developer side of things when it comes to testing. I'll share some coding strategies and nuances for developers, and some general tips and advice about how to make A-B testing successful at your company. I'll walk you through the setup of an example test and show how you can use some modern tooling to create awesome experiences for your company's customers. It's time for the tool struck. Using Storybook to maintain components in Redwood is the first session by Milecia McGregor, developer advocate at Iterative. We're going to talk about Storybook, Redwood, and component-driven development today. If you have any questions about this talk, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Flipped Coding, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Now, please join me in welcoming Facundo Giuliani, Developer Relations Engineer at Storyblock. Hello, everyone. I will be talking about incremental static grid generation, a feature of NetJS, a React framework that we can use to create web applications using different types of rendering, like server-side rendering, client-side rendering, and static-side generation. With incremental static regeneration, we can get advantage of the benefits of the static websites and also offer a great experience to our developers and visitors. See you there! Joe Wingard, Associate Director of Engineering at CMI, represents the Service Engine. Today I'm going to talk to you about an application I've developed that I call Service Engine. In short, Service Engine is an application that you can run that will connect to many really popular databases, and it will auto-provision REST, GraphQL, and gRPC interfaces that support full CRUD to any of the tables, views, and materialized views inside of that database. Azure Cloud for the web front-end developers is the next lecture by Maxim Salnikov, Developer Engagement Lead at Microsoft. Hi folks, I'm Maxim Salnikov from Norway. I invite you all to join my session about Azure Cloud for the web front-end developers. See you online. Coming up next, we have Abder Rachman Avad, Senior Software Engineer at Octopods. I created and maintain vValidate for Vue.js since 2016. I write about JavaScript, TypeScript, Vue.js on my blog, lockart.com. So check it out if you are interested in that type of content. Build your next app with web components. Andrew Demaris, Principal Software Engineer at Meltwater. I'm going to be giving a talk on why you should uh, build your next app with web components. I've gained a lot of experience in the industry over the last 17 years. And one of the things that I've learned is that frameworks are not something that is guaranteed. Uh, they come and go, unfortunately. And what happens when you do that is a lot of tech debt. So building with a platform is a great way to make sure that we don't experience that tech debt in the future. And that's why I'm going to explain a little bit about web components, what they are, how to use them, and also talk about how you can use them today to build your next web application successfully without having to rely on a framework. Infrastructure as Code for JavaScript applications on AWS with TypeScript is the next session by Denis Artyuhovic, Senior Software Engineer at Dazen. My promise for you is that till the end of this talk, you're going to have complete infrastructure production ready one for your front-end application. Kilian Valkov is here to show you how to make your Electron app feel at home everywhere. Having developed hundreds of websites and dozens of desktop apps in multiple frameworks, right now I'm building a web browser for developers called Polypane using the Electron framework. In my talk, I will guide you through eight ways to make your Electron app feel at home on Mac, Windows, and Linux by combining what makes your app unique with the expectations and defaults that each operating system has. Quick apps. Easy coding and frictionless UX is the next session by Martin Alvarez Espinar, Web Standards Manager at Huawei Technologies. I will show you Quick Apps, which is a new concept of uh, light apps that do not require installation and can run on top of the operating system. 
we can make use of all the native APIs of the device and we can offer better user experiences. This quick app framework is implementing the WCC mini app standard and I will show you all the details in my talk. Please attend and see you there. Rishi Raja, Solutions Engineer at Layer Zero by Limelight Networks, is here to advise on how to generate pages on demand. With introduction of Core Web Vitals into search ranking, it's important for developers to focus on performance. But to get that static like performance in dynamic application, Next.js introduced incremental static generation. But the benefits only apply to Next.js apps, and that's where Layer Zero comes in with the general approach. I'm excited to cover the benefits, the drawbacks, and how you can do ISD with Next.js and Layer Zero. Thanks for joining in. Dux Redux Redux Tools is the next session by Sergi Zuravel, lead software engineer at Appsio. Hello everybody, I'm going to talk to you about modular approaches for structuring Redux apps. Redux is a king of the state management in the React world, even though the more and more competitors appear. But Redux always had some problems and developers complained about it. I will review what problems uh, developers have with Redux and how community tried to resolve those problems over the years. I will review the evolution of Redux applications from Duxes to Redux Toolkit. Ron Lyle Dagdag, lead software engineer at Spacey, is here to help you develop Spidey Senses, anomaly detection of JavaScript apps. Okay, what is this spidey sense? It's that gut feel and vibe or intuition that you learn through time, right? You learn from the past. There are some, I, you know, as a developer, being a developer for more than 20 years now, you get that sense of feeling of a project if it can become successful or not. I guess you learn it through time and you learn it through the different, uh, I guess, you know, different experience from the past and you kind of build that intuition and in what the technology can deliver in terms of requirements and those things. Highway to Elm, a safer and funnier front-end world. Jump in with Jordan Grena, software engineer at Visio. Hello, today I will be talking about uh, Elm, which is a delightful language for front-end development. If you're doing some JavaScript today, uh, I think you're used to runtime exception in production. Uh, for example, uh, undefined is not a function, null has no member of value, uh, etc. Uh, if you want to discover a better world with no runtime exception, come and uh, see my talk about Elm. In the next session, Colby Fayark, developer advocate at Applitus, will show you how to scale WordPress with Next.js. I'm super excited to talk to you about how we can build performant and reliable web apps by bringing together the great editing experience of WordPress along with Next.js. I'll see you over at the talk. Joshua Arvin Latt, CTO of New Works Interactive Labs, is here to address pragmatic state management in React, Angular, and Vue.js applications. Today, I will talk about pragmatic state management in React, Angular, and Vue.js applications. We will talk about Recoil, Redux, Mobex, NGRX, Vuex, and other different options in my talk later. So till then, and see you in my talk. The culture truck opens up with Riaz Virani. I'm a freelance web developer, um, and you can read more of my stuff at, at uh, riazv.me. Today's topic, the thing I'm going to talk about, is called Five Tips for Success, How to Thrive at Your First Dev Job. I'm as assuming that a number of you especially are, are kind of from this perspective of like, you actually are breaking into the industry, you either are about to start your first job, you're either in a boot camp looking to finish your first job, or maybe you're just in the throes of the challenges I'm going to talk about in the first few months. If you're not, if you've been doing this for a few years, this is kind of your chance to just take a second to reset yourself and think about like what your experience was like when you did join the industry and kind of break into your first job. I want you to kind of channel that energy because it'll help you empathize uh, and help other people on your team as they're joining. In the next lecture, Karan Balkar will do his best to convince you that clean code is no longer a myth. Hello everyone, uh, hope you're all doing well and thank you so much for joining this session. 
so have you ever thought of you know about the ways by which you could go about writing clean code or are you one of those who often complains that writing clean code is uh, you know something far fetched so this session would help you understand how writing clean code is very much possible and how it can be automated using popular javascript frameworks so eventually it will help you to develop it as a habit so i hope you enjoy the session and thank you once again the lessons learned track is the last one today Building super-powered HTML forms with JavaScript will be presented by Austin Jill, senior full-stack developer at Reveal Biosciences. Today I'm going to be discussing adding JavaScript to HTML forms to give them superpowers. Before we get too far, I want to explain what I consider to be superpowers. These are going to be user experience improvements that do not negatively impact functionality, native functionality, uh, accessibility, semantics, performance, or security. Uh, this is also commonly referred to as progressive enhancement. Alex Omeyer, CEO of StepSize, is here to show you how to deal with technical debt. Last year alone, I interviewed over 300 top software development people about technical debt. And I've been working on products to help engineering teams ship better software faster for over five years now and raised millions of pounds to finance them. In my talk on how to manage technical debt, I'll share with you all the lessons I learned from the best people in our industry so you can apply them too. In the last but definitely not least talk at the conference, you will discover and understand the grumpy parts of JavaScript with Rob Richardson, developer advocate at Cyril. Hi, welcome to Comp42 JavaScript. We're going to talk about JavaScript, the grumpy parts. Why is it so weird? And <laughs> how can we demystify it? That's all we got for Conf42 JavaScript 2021. Big thank you to our speakers for sharing all this knowledge, to our sponsors and partners for making this whole thing possible, and to you for attending. As always, free RSVP unlocks all the content immediately. On the other hand, keynotes will be live streamed after this video ends. Please make sure to check the schedule to see on which time which one will go live. There's also the Discord server, so I would like to invite you to join in to have a chat with other attendees and speakers. I hope to see you there in a minute. That was Mark. Thank you so much.